Hello everybody and welcome not to Elder Kings 2 but to Crusader Kings 3 properly. As you all might know I've decided to end the Elder Kings 2 series for a number of reasons. Two of which are it's just going to be a lot of warring to finish up what we need to do and that gets stale rather very quickly at least in my opinion. And with the nature of both modding and general, when a new big update comes out, eventually the save file will end up just dying and being lost to the ether. Unless it's for like a really old game, such as Skyrim. So I posted a poll about uh, nearly a week ago asking what you all would think of the series. Ending either doing one final big war or just keep going until it just couldn't go anymore and keep going until it just couldn't go anymore one out. So I do apologize to everyone that was in, that was enjoying the series. I certainly loved it as well. But that doesn't mean Elder Kings 2 is gone from the channel. No, no, no. We will return to the mod at some point. But that doesn't mean we're done with Crusader Kings 3 as a whole. In fact, today we're going to start a... I'm hesitant to call it a new series, but at least look at the new DLC that was just recently released, which is Tours and Tournaments, if I got the name right. I'm sure editing me will get it uh, figured out. But... We're going to jump right in into the good old 1066, the end of the Viking Age, which is the earlier start date for Crusader Kings 3 and 867 about. Historians put the Viking Age starting about the late 700s, so late 8th century and going all the way to 1066, where eventually... You have this guy here, Harold Hardrada, going to fight King Harold of England to claim the English throne for himself. And Harold Hardrada is often known as the last Viking, even at, down here. By using his own enemies against him, can you give this Varangian Viking control over the North Sea? Which would be Norway, Denmark, and England, because that is the North Sea region. Of course, in actual history, Harold Hardrada would fail dying at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, thus ending the Viking Age, at least for Scandinavia. And then you would also have William... I'm not going to say the epithet because of monetization, even though I'm not monetized, just, just for YouTube's sake. But you would have Duke William of Normandy, who... Is fighting for the throne of England at the same time as Harold Hardrada, who is a Norman, which is a hybridization of Old Norse and Frankish culture. So you have two descendants of the Viking era going after England, and eventually William wins out and becomes king of England and establishes the English culture, which would then go on to form America. So, if you look at the chain of events, the Old Norse, <laughs> the Vikings are somewhat related to the founding of America. And I can already see the flame heated comments in this video as I point that out. But we're not going to be playing in 867, we are going to be playing in 1066. In Scandinavia. Because. I got a very interesting idea. So. As I mentioned in the last post. That I posted. I've actively tried to avoid. Looking up anything for the new DLC. That just came out. So that way I can enjoy it. Because for this series. We're going to be playing as. King Eric II Stenkilsen of Sweden. 
not Eric the Heathen, who is one of the last Asatru, the old Norse faith, in that you can play as in 1066. It's, their holy sites are somewhat still Barak, and there are still some followers throughout. And I actually, what I'm going to be doing if this becomes a series is either at the start or the end of every episode, give a little historical fact. And since I'm choosing to play Sweden for this series, starting out, here's a little historical fact of Sweden. So, Sweden, as a kingdom, was founded in 995. That's what historians put the, quote, founding date for the United Kingdom of Sweden. So, all this... I'm going to get the terrain map mode. All this area here that we see. Historians put the unification under one singular crown or one single ruler to 995 with Olaf and I'm probably going to butcher this name because I'm still learning Swedish fun fact I am learning Swedish or Svenska to Olaf Stoktungen Stok Stoktung aka Olaf the Swede and Olaf the Swede is the first record person as I mentioned to unite the Swedes of Svealand, which is pretty much Uppsala, or Upsland, and the Geats, which would be central Sweden. He's the first person to unite all these individual tribes under one singular ruler or structure system. And it's thought that Stokt Skultung means taxes or treasures. So Olaf was often given the epithet of tributary king. And that's also a part to differentiate himself from another ruler at the time, which we might actually be able to see on here. Let's see. Now, uh, let's go to the title history. So, 995. At that time, Norway was under the rule of King Olaf, pretty much Olaf, the first Tvedvikson. So, he, the first king of Sweden was given the epithet of Olaf the Swede to derive himself from his rival in Norway. And what makes Olaf the Swede a notable figure is the fact that he had a very strong part to play in Christianizing Sweden. Because at his rule, Sweden was still very much following the old Norse faith. Denmark and Norway actually converted very, very quickly, especially Denmark given its closeness to central Germany and France. And Norway, it converted pretty well because of its relation to Denmark and Great Britain and Ireland. Sweden, where it was more towards east, more towards these Slavic, the Usnuko, the Vidlist, these still pagan faiths, it was the Christianization didn't happen as fast as the other states. That is until Olaf the Swede came. Now, that isn't to say overnight everyone just suddenly started following Jesus. No, as we see here, there were still people that followed the old ways. And another thing that makes Olaf the Swede a notable figure is he is the first person to establish a coinage system in Sweden. And he would often use the word Rex to mean king on those coins. Kung Olaf Sung, to all my Sabaton fans out there. Olaf the Swede ruled, as I said, from 995 to 1022. And if we go here to the title history of Sweden, there we have the man himself, 995, Olaf Eriksson, Olaf the Swede. Again, the first 
Christian king. Of course, you had his father, Eric the Victorious, who was king of Sweden. But the first person that historians can ride behind to be the true king of Sweden, the true first king, is Olaf Eriksson. Olaf's Stoktong, Olaf the Swede. And he would then go on to be succeeded by his son, Yonde Jakob, who ruled from 1022 to 1050. As we see here, at his death, died at 1050. And then we have King Erman the Old, who had a very, very short reign. And then you have a change of power in house with Stenkil Ragnolf Salt. And then we have Eric the Second Stenkilson. But Sweden this time is known as the two Eric's. Because you have Eric the Second Stenkilson, and then you have Eric the Heathen, who as we just saw, is part of the Monsu house, which goes back all the way to Olaf the Swede. Yeah, even after Olaf's death, they still filled around with the Old Norse and Christian faiths, to where, as Sweden was Christianizing and the old ways was starting to get dragged out, you saw more and more favor towards people that followed, Christ to become leaders. And so you have this very interesting dynamic where you can still play as a Asatru Norseman, well, Asatru Swede, in 1066, where much of the world is very much either Muslim, Catholic, or Orthodox. At least where all the action is in Crusader Kings 3. Because Sarah Kings 3 and EU4 focuses heavily on Europe. And I want to do this perspective because, as you all might know, if you're a fan of my channel, then I know that you're all fans of that. If you're a fan of my channel, then I know that you all are also fans of many a true nerd who did a kind of reverse of what we're doing. He did a revival of the Austro faith as Eric the Heathen in his series. I can't recommend, I can't say this enough. It's absolutely phenomenal. So many highs and low points and a lot of craziness happening in such a short time. After you're done watching my video, go boot up his playlist. I assure you, you will not regret it. So, if many true nerd already did a playthrough in this region, in this exact time point, then what am I doing here? Well, there's two factors in that. One, that was released at the very beginning of Crusader Kings 3 lifespan. So he hasn't touched the game, as far as I know, outside of special videos, for a true playthrough since the game released. And that directly correlates to the next thing. We're playing with all the DLCs installed, and we're also gang into the new DLC tours and tournaments. I'm probably saying it wrong or I'm getting the name mixed up. Error me will fix it with an annotation. And because I haven't experienced it yet, I thought, you know what? Let's play Sweden, who I'm learning the language of. It's made by the company of one of my favorite video game developers, Paradox. And one of my favorite bands of all time is based in Sweden. Now I just order a tunic from a company in Sweden. A lot of things that are like are coming from Sweden. I don't know if that means anything. I'll let you all be the star of that. So my series is going if this does become a series. Focus on creating the historical border so he's up to EU4 start date where we have all Sweden, most of Sapni and all of Finland under our control, essentially setting up for the rise of Carlos 
Rex and Gustav Adolphus. Boom, Carol, a song. <laughs> Swedish is just so fun to s saying stuff in Swedish. It's just so fun. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to experience the new DLC and I'll throughout the series tell historical facts of Sweden and the region around. Will it be all in a chronological order? Most likely not, but you get a little bit of history, which I do love. And history is just another story at the end of the day. So with that long ramble over, let's get into the setup and looking at stuff. So we are Eric the second Stenkilsen. And our house simply has a model of trust. We are going to change that to trust of the Lord and strength shall arrive. I think that is a very good motto to have. And it still plays off of it. Trust of the Lord and strength shall arrive. Or trust in the Lord. Because we are putting a lot of trust to unify, or at least conquer, much of the Baltic to establish a very strong empire of sorts. And we're definitely going to need to trust. If you've seen the Elder Kings 2 series, a lot of things went bad very, very quickly. So starting off, we're going to find ourselves a very good wife and hopefully a good alliance as well. So... We are 20 years old, we got 2 in Diplomacy, 16 in Martial, 10 in Stewardship, I like that, 5 Intrigue, and 0 Learning. So, let's see if I can try and get a wife that has some pretty good traits. Call me 5, 11, 11, 12, 12, that's pretty good right there. You at 16, you're Russian, you're Orthodox. 14, 9, 8, 10, 13. You have both calmly and genius. That's, mm. but you're also lustful and gluttonous. Hmm. Malfred, you're Swedish, so you of our culture. There is a potential alliance with the Duchy of Joland. Jutland. Let's see. And then the county of Luca. Some random count in Hungary. Gilda Thorg's daughter. 86274. Calmly 10 years old. Hmm. Grand Wedding, what does that mean? Toggle Grand Wedding Promise. So this is from the new DLC. Promise to organize a Grand Wedding, making the marriage offer more likely to be accepted. Average cost, 475 gold. Both spouses are adults. You have three years to fulfill your promise or there will be serious consequences. What? Okay, that's going to be interesting to look into. I think for this stage of the game, I would rather just get a decent alliance starting out. And I could go ahead and start getting myself entangled with Denmark. And we will definitely be touching up on some of their history in the coming videos that I make of this. Princess Sigurd Sovens Daughter. Two five five six six or Gunhill Seven Stalter nine four seven eight eleven. And I do apologize to all my Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish listeners out there for any mispronunciation of any of these names. I'm still very, very learning the language of your people because one, I do love it and as a practitioner of history. Looking back to where English came from, the Old Norse, the Old Germanic, 
is very interesting to me. I do want to learn because I just love the history of the cultures around the language. So I do apologize if I mispronunciate any of these names. You have full... You have my complete and other acceptance to flame me in the comments below. And please, if you are going to do that, leave a comment also of how to properly pronounce these names. That will go a long ways to help me with learning. Princess Maria of Hungary. Decent amount of troops and a claim on the Kingdom of Hungary itself? Jeez. I'm nowhere strong enough to take up on that offer, but... Mm. Let's see. I think... Sigurd is the... No. I think Grun... Healed is the best option because 11 learning. Oh, poor intelligence. That's fine. Poor. Overall, better. Um, better stewardship. Then again, there are the Norwegians. If Maria Hilt's daughter and Ingrid Hilt's daughter. Normally, I would choose Maria because I do like stewardship because it is my favorite traits to go down. Travel split? What? Travel is the means by which a character gets from one location to another, primarily to attend activities. There are numerous ways to plan your journey, like choosing a caravan master to hire, selecting travel options, and customizing your route. You will meet many interesting characters along your path, but be wary of danger that may lie in wait. Mysterious. Okay. Very interesting. I think we will go with Ingrid, although... You're related and there is a high risk of inbreeding. So we're not going to go with Ingrid. Can we go with Gunhild? Inbreed. Okay, so... Um, Lines powder. Powder. Power. We could go with Russell. Hmm. You know what? I think I will just end up getting a trait. At least try to, so. Twenty-eight calmly could help. Catherine. You know what? We will go with Katharina. She's Franconian. So, Germanic faith, oh, Germanic culture. She's Christian. Okay, diplomacy and martial stewardship is what we are looking after, especially with what I plan to. Yeah, intrigue and learning. So, I would probably go with. Vlax Lava, but where she's already 26, she would end up dying before me. Although the learning is pretty good. And Lustful could help counter any negative bonuses that age brings with trying to get a child. You know what? We will go with that Vlax Lava. Vlax Lava. I'm not, I don't speak Russian. But we will go with you. We'll go with a standard wedding for now. Although a grand wedding is very, 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 very tempting. We'll just go with the standard wedding. So that's that out of the way. We'll go ahead and get our lifestyle perks also. I'll probably go with Marshall for a little bit because I do plan to do a bunch of early wars. Especially in this area up here in G... Jutland, which is Jutland? No. I at least want to try and get that duchy and that duchy under Swedish rule within Eric's lifetime. But first, I'll be going for very early war against the Count of Dale. 
So I think diplomacy, especially authoritarian focus, is the way to go. So we got that. Grand tour. Host a magnificent tour and pay a visit to your vassals in their lands. Each stop will have a two-month duration. Anticipating rewards from hosting a grand tour activity. Which, if we look at activities, an activity is a special occasion hosted for a specific purpose. Such as going on a hunt to relieve stress. So hunts are now part of... Yeah, over here. Hunts and feasts and festivals are now part of this new tab here okay yeah uh, where was it though the host holds the activity in a specific location which affects it in various ways and everyone who attends must travel there every attending character interacts with each other by setting an intent which they try to pursue during the activity a regular activity such as feast or a hunt are smaller and less impressive than grand activities so a grand activity would be a grand tour, which is what we're looking at now. A grand tournament, which gives prestige and stress loss. And the grand wedding. So a grand tour will probably get us county control, popular opinion, and stress. Now I do want to relook at popular opinion here because in Elder Kings 2, it had a big focus when trying to build buildings. So I want to fill I want to familiarize myself with vanilla. The general populace of each county has an opinion of the character who holds their county. If the population is unhappy, they might start to join a peasant faction or populist faction, either of which can soon spread throughout the entire realm. The easiest way of controlling popular opinion is to ensure that the county holder is of the same culture and faith as the population. Popular opinion having a different faith is modified by both the county's faith hostility and its fervor scaling linearly between 0 and 100. Alright. Tour success rewards. A value which determines which rewards you will get at the end of a grand tour. You can gain and lose points by selecting certain options at the start of your tour, making decisions which align with your tour type. Okay, so level one we get prestige, level two we gain poor child vassal's opinion, and poor child vassal's want stability, decentralization, and peace, and for the realm to stay out of outside affairs. Honorable or reserved vassals often adopt this vassal's stance. So vassals now take stances, which I will probably have to look at at some point. So constructions or upgrade holdings make guardians of close family use the domestic affairs council task. Okay, that's what gets them to like me. And dislikes high crown authority, obvious, declares non-trivial wars. They perform honorable and rational heirs with a high stewardship skill. Ooh. Visual is a vassal opinion illiterate liege this character holds a successful tour vassal tax contribution plus 15 percent development growth and random capital plus 20 a month that's good magnificent liege pretty much vassal limit plus straight up vassal limit plus five Wow. Vassal tax contribution plus 20 in development growth and realm plus 30 a month. Jeez. And a grand tournament. Holds a magnificent set of martial or cultural contests, attracting contenders from near and far to compete in hostilence for prizes and prestige. Anticipating rewards for grand tournament activity, prestige, stress loss, Hustler trait experience. So, opinion of hustler characters plus 10. This character has participated in martial games, sharpening their skills in warfare and personal combat. Trait path. Some traits offer several paths, each of which will improve the trait in different ways. Earning trait experience is required to move further down the path. And it doesn't really tell how, so we can 
Wait, did I just get at the bottom there? No, okay, so, foot. The human body is the ultimate tool in mastering will bring you the world. Require 30 plus strength experience, plus one powers. Rank two, plus one martial and powers. And three is powers per stress level, plus four. Number of knights, plus two. Size of men on range regiments, plus two. Okay, that that's pretty good. Bow, small health boost, small health boost, and vessel levy contribution, and small health boost and army gold maintenance minus twenty five percent. I can already see a building that can stack with that. Okay, that that might be the best one. Prestige plus five. Uh, prestige plus ten percent. Glory Hound Vassal opinion? Glory Hound Vassals care about standing in prestige and showing the world the strength of the realm they are part of. Behold or discomp discompensationate vassals often adopt this vassal stance. Has any partition successive succession law? Achieves victories on offensive wars and fights some ton activities. Has high crown authority and signs defeats or white peace in wars. They prefer bold and brave heirs with high martial skill. Okay. Now what's rank three for horse? Month three renown plus five percent. Okay then. And wit. Diplomacy. Monthly lifestyle learning. Across the board, monthly lifestyle plus five and zealot vassals. What are zealots? Zealot vassals are focused on matters of faith and are swayed by pious actions. Zealots or vengeful vassals often adapt this vassal stance as do clergy. And they like construction or upgrades to temple holdings, naturally. Succeeds with the learning lifestyle scheme. Learning language scheme. Has virtuous traits, goes on pilgrimage, ask her faith for gold. Oh. Okay. Has sinful traits. That, hmm. A lot of the times I just ask the Pope for gold, so that, ooh. Diplomacy plus one. Monthly lifestyle experience plus ten. Monthly army movement speed plus tw. All of these are good. I kind of like the bow better because it helps save on economy, but at some point, you get to where your economy can succeed no matter what, but all of these are really good. Okay, then. Uh, I'm not going to have these be notified now. I'll do them when I can. But that's really good. Let's see, doesn't look like there's any changes to hunting. May gain trophy artifacts, I already knew that. What about these? It's out of time that all swing come together to make sacrifice to God. These rituals not only bind the faithful together, they confirm my place as king of all the land. You organize a festival involving... Deciding the scale of the festival, selecting what sacrifice, even choosing one of your prisoners as a chief sacrifice, gaining or losing popular opinion depending on the tenets of your subject's faith. So I think this is more for Eric the Heathen and his minority. Minority vassals feel that their faith or culture is marginalized by the liege. Vassals of hostile face cultures with less than 30% cultural acceptance often adopt this vassal stance. It is promote culture, converts to faith or county, so we will never be able to get him on our side unless we just somehow get him to like us. Although I want to take Allland, Upland, and Gets Rickalandia to myself because Upland is my primary duchy. 
So I want those for myself at some point. It's something that I know is over here. Economic and buildings. What is this about? So Temple of Uppsala. It tells that there's a special field building here. So highlighted means that there is one already built. Dark means that one can be built. So I can build this university here, which reduce costs for hosting grand tournaments, board game and recital contests in this holding by 50%. Increased quality of sponsored book inspiration enables the Sense University education option for rules within the same realm. The county gains development, yada yada yada, and the holding, all the nice stuff. But then there's this, the Falun Mining Settlement, which I believe is where Sabaton is from, Falun. A small mining settlement has sprung up near where ore veins lie. The settlers have started opening up the veins and extracting the ore, but so far they have only scratched the surface. So I definitely want this holding to myself. Increases quality of sponsor artisans, weapon, armor, and metalsmith. Tax plus 2 a month. Station siege weapons effectiveness plus 20. Levy size, holding, and development plus 5, 5, and 10 respectively. So I definitely want uh, Bird Slogan to be my secondary duchy. Which normally, if I'm going for a very big empire, say I'm going to form all of Scandinavia, I would probably either hold Skialand or... Oslo as my secondary duchies. So Viken and Skiadland. I would probably hold those two as my secondary duchies. But where I'm kind of going more into Sapni, Finland, and maybe Lithuania and Estonia, because the Baltic Sea, I might have to reconsider that. Especially with these buildings. What's in Gotland? Visby Ringma. That gains fort level, garrison, hostile raid time, holding taxes. This would be very good for the Viking Age. So, something to keep in mind, everyone that's looking to play in this area with the Northern Lords. So, I'm going to do a little bit more setting up because we're already at. 30 minutes and then we're going to do our first two wars possibly even three so i'll be back in just a little bit <laughs> and idealist this is all very new and interesting and i'm I, i'm very happy that they added this so we got that settled now just one more thing two more things i want to do i want to get a court physician I will put my clergyman as court. I haven't looked there yet. I'm going to hold off on spreading the faith because I need Eric gone. But I'm going to set you on train troops. I can't really replace you with anyone. In fact, I can't really replace anyone on the council yet. So, go have you try and get the capital up because this isn't mine yet I got an idea of how I can do it but now I'm going to set the artifacts I'm going to have the house banner there and we'll have the dynasty banner there go set the armies there and lastly i'm just for now voting for my brother and we will hold court sitting on my throne i gesture for my guards to open the doors of the hall the stream of people fill in some lining up in front of my throne while others move out of the way so they can simply observe the proceedings after several moments all movement in the chamber has seated has seated all faces turn towards mine exponentially. In front of me, I count three partitioners line up in an orderly row, waiting for me to call on them. 
Jester for the first in line to approach. My lord, I regret to inform you that the religious situation in my lands is out of control. I have tried to make my subjects see the light of our true faith, but too many of them persist in their wrong beliefs. I beg of you to use your authority and power to help me. So you are Mayor Ustin of Arboga, in the city of Arboga, which is in my holding, which I do want that, and that is also true, and since that is my holding, I will have you convert faith. But back to the courts. Convert. Yeah. My guest Finn approaches my throne with a smirk on his face and bows deeply. Greetings, your majesty. Greetings, your majesty. During my recent trip to High Chieftain of Livonia, I learned some fascinating tidbits about several of High Chieftain Talisman's subjects. I would be happy to share with them. But price. Uh... I'm not going to pay yet, because I need to get the economy in some kind of s decent situation, so... Be gone, rumor monger. My court has no place for the likes of you. And now, my courtier, Afilda, shows me a page filled with unfamiliar symbols, insisting on its legibility. I have developed a writing language specifically for the women of the court since the letters are mostly taught to men. If you allow it, I'll begin teaching the ladies at once. What a great idea, so gains all female courtiers gain 10 opinion me and language of women, which is plus one diplomacy and learning. Or I can make better use and invent a code. We'll go with a great idea. As the last partitioner departs, various courtiers follow them out of the room having business to attend elsewhere. Others remain talking amongst themselves about the recent proceedings. Soon the ceremonial humility of the proceedings has dropped away entirely, with the hum and bustle of normal courtly life taking its place. My business is done. And before on pause, I'm going to... Army movement speed plus 1% to 5%, supply plus 2 plus 10, I'm going to get a Caravan Master and put my Involved as Caravan Master. And I'm also going to get a Bodyguard because I feel like I will need one. And I will put my brother, Prince Hawken the Red, as my Bodyguard. And now I'm going to let some time pass. I'm now married to Queen Vexild. Vexlava. And my brothers are also getting married. And wedding celebration. With my marriage to Queen Vexilva, the realm expects us to throw a suitable, extravagant wedding celebration. It's well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some many consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during time of jubilation. Of course I will collect it. Who pays for their own wedding? Or I'll let my subjects enjoy the festivities without worry or care. And since we are low on prestige, I will get that. And looking at the buildings, we do have farms, which is good. And that's... Stables? I can... Okay. I'm gonna go with trade ports. Because I need to start developing stuff, but, um... Yeah, eventually... I'm gonna have to find a way to get you... To leave. Although... We might need to take a quick page out of a familiar... Playbook. Just out of carry up. I know I resort to it a lot, but it's very simple. Plus, it will get me at least 
upland as my capital, and then I can very easily get that and that. So, say what you will, it works. Anyway, let's declare war on Dale. Let's see. Becomes my vassal. You know what? Can I just offer you vassalization? A little few obligations. Let's go. So, there is that done. I don't have a cast of spelly on you, and I will need a cast of spelly, so. We'll do that. Actually, I'd rather try and get the most border province first. That way, things can go smoothly, because I'm so used to doing border feuds, but I am a Catholic king now, so I can't do that. It's gonna be strange being back in this play style. Very strange indeed. And Count Tuk uh Verdon. You don't like me. You really don't like me because you are Asatru. And then there's this fill up here. I don't know why you don't like me that much. But I will say, I can definitely put you on the council. Oh, that's Tuk. Hmm. If I put Tuk on the council and then start swaying him, I could potentially get him to convert naturally. I think I will do that. Yeah, 100, now 50, so I can easily do that. I'll get my wife to do court politics, so that way people can start liking me as well. And currently I'm trying to get my bishop to like me. A lot, a lot of planning here. My mother, Ingrid, has been getting more irritable by the day. As I sit on my throne, contemplating the possible causes, the woman herself storms towards me. Just as she used to when I misbehaved as a child. Eric, my son, you have got to do something about the sparse lodgings you offer your guests. Don't you care about what people think of you? This is no way for a king to present to himself. At this rate, you'll be the laughingstock of Sweden. Nay, all of Swedes. Yes, Ma, I'll fix it. Which instantly bumps it up to decent fashion. Ah, uh, so you think you're better than my courtiers. Which my mom loses opinion of me, but every courtier gains opinion, so... Kinda works? I could just send her to become a monk. I could gain dread or just... Not have her speak to me. I'm sorry, mom. I gotta keep my image. But I will actually take that, uh... I'm already at decent fashion. In small lodgings, what what were you going on about? I will bump the food up, though. And our ward... And our court type is warlike, so... It will make it easier to go to war, and I affect the supposed 10. Always love to see that. Our court language is Norse, which understandable. I think I will probably end up either switching to High German or Greek at some point. But I'm going to see if I can get that claim real quick so we can do at least one war for this episode, and then I'll be like back. Lubeck. Lubeck. Ah, 
My wife's pregnant. Fate smiles upon me. My wife, Queen Vixu, is bearing child. I can't wait to hold the babe in my arms. And my brother is being situational. Alright, he's starting to share power. Good, good, good. Vessels on. And we're working on it. Raiders from Finland. I cannot have this in my country. Rise and defeat the Viking horde. So there is a reason why I said that. Even though Scandinavia stopped being Vikings, in this time period and the 1000s you still have people in estonia livonia you still have people in this area being referred to as viking you even have people in this area being referred to as viking because viking is not a culture it's an occupation meaning raider or pirate so there's another little history fact about you viking is not a culture it is a occupation mainly being Referred to as raider or pirates or conscript even. And keep trying to get secrets. We need secrets. Uh, I need to try and get Eric out of here as quick as possible. Speaking of Eric, I'll put you... In fact, I could hire someone better. My brother... Possibly... Yeah, my brother who's... You know what? I'll get... Ing... As my... Spy master. Trying it in six months. Good, good, good. Which is... But yeah, Vikings were in occupation. Not a culture. That's why it kind of irks me a little bit when people say Viking sword. Viking air... Are you kidding me? It's a way outside the birthing chamber. Each minute feels like a lifetime. The Shizla's screams have ceased with no infant's cry to replace it. Something is wrong. I can feel it in my bones. The door opens. The midwife's rich expression confirms all my fears. I'm so sorry, my lord. Lady Vashila. Your daughter. They are both in heaven now. Why? St. Bridget, what have I done to deserve this? My daughter was still born and my wife dead. Oh, Sweden grieves with me. She was a good wife too. At least she was going to be. Well, time to remarry. Let's get... Mm. The fact that happened on the first video of this. The first video. Could get a possible alliance with someone in Denmark. The first video just... Mm. All right, Bona, you're Cisplian, so you're it Frankish and Lombard, so pretty much Italian or Latin. You you got your genius. You have good scores. We'll go with you. <laughs> Drove you will be 16 in just a few months. And Tuck has gotten me some coinage. Very good. Thank you, Tuck. I can't believe that happened. Ugh. It, 
it's a curse at this point that someone dies like that. It, it's a genuine curse. <sighs> oh, hopefully something like that don't happen again soon. All right. Greetings, my liege. I prowl through documents both ancient and of less certain provenance. I finally have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of Chieftain of Heralder. All that is missing is one little bribe. See it done. I'll wait for the next month tick. Oh, Prince Eric wants to see me. I arrived in certain games to pay homage to you, glorious king, as a show of my loyalty. I hope my pledge of submission alone is evidence enough of my honor. Show Prince Eric in. I wait patiently on my throne for the rival of Prince Eric, who is soon announced and ushered before me. He kneels in deference offering nothing but his oath to fulfill and serve as vassal of the kingdom. At last, I bid the duke arise, confirm my satisfaction in Eric's rights to the lands he rules in my stead. Serve me well, Prince Eric. Or you may not be serving here very much longer. And now, since I have this claim, I can go to war. And since you have no allies, now I have more troops. It's a very simple affair. And I do have to be careful now with the wars that I choose. So, oh boy. And we're bleeding 3.6 ducats a month, so I definitely want to get this done as quick as possible. So I wonder if I can declare war on Finland. Because they do start with this area as Raider Sculpture in the U4. So it will be interesting to see. Espionage. Sodomy. While performing his duties as my spy master, Mayor Ing has uncovered a secret held by Count Bjorn of Hilingsund. So one of Eric's vassals. He has been enjoying the intimate company of other men. The foolishness of thinking that such a sin against God will go unnoticed. You will regret in giving your desires, Bjorn. For I'm going to blackmail you. And that is a strong hook that we can use. We're just going to go through this war very quickly. I guess I could also declare war on Ingermanland. Let's see, who's in charge of the army? I guess I could be in charge of the army. See, I do have the open terrain experts, so plus four in planes, farmlands, and state. This area is plain, so we would get the advantage. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. Found secrets again, this time Eric's physician. She's a witch! Ho ho ho! And that's the war one. Sweet. Let's see, how angry did that make people? Eh, not too bad. I am going to be holding on to that myself for a while. But now, seeing as Eric really has my mother. 
holds that land, so I would end up getting it myself. I see how that works, so. Eric is my uncle, okay? But those familiar bonds mean nothing in this situation. I'm sorry, uncle. But the good of the kingdom must be done. And let's see, can I declare war on you? I can. Holy war, Cassus Belly. Let's go. And there goes that alliance, which was through my brother. All right, then. So I'll wait just a few more months, try and let the treasury build back up, and then we'll declare war on England. And then we technically have all day or Sweden. All right. A little time bribed. It seems that not every servant at Prince Eric's court is blindly loyal. Look. Floki assures me that he has ways in, and that a few coins in the right pocket can go a long way. What's a little gold, after all? I would go in debt for a little bit. Mm. It's too risky. Like if if it was if it was a higher percent chance, I would go with it. But we already are at ninety-five, so I'd rather not risk it. In enemy territory. A war is determined by its battles, but battles are determined by their preparations. Being caught without plan or direction is a good way to lose. My armies must always be well supplied. I would get luck. The gist, which would be very good. Siege engineer, Froder. Travel speed, that's pretty good. I'm going to go with that one, travel safety, because I do plan to go on at least one tour with Eric the second here. And not to Eric the third. So... Alright, since the troops are now back up to speed... Can't form Norland yet. And I can't even give it to someone who probably deserves it, because... Yeah. He has most of the land. All I can do is get another vassal. So, New Orleans, declare war, holy war this time. You may join in. I dare you to. He actually did. All right, then. That kind of helps my situation out a little bit. So now I can just take the land. As soon as it's done. Okay, this should be very easy. All right, so let's get this war done. The Winged Messenger. As my scheme moves closer to fruition, swift communication is key. I have an especially clever pigeon which Loki could use to send an urgent message to me here in Sordomanland if the need arises. But how would I get the bird into the castle of Upland? Mm, no. Again, it's too risky even 
Especially now that I am at war with the man. Religious convictions. I've got an idea in my attempts to align Prince Bishop Advalad to my interests. With the right arrangements, I may be able to convince him that I am acting not merely in my own interests, but in the interests of the Lord himself. I believe I can make a very convincing argument. No, no, I cannot. Or perhaps I should keep to the mag nuances or necessities, which that works perfectly enough. Getting me above, and now I can start swaying talk. And I am going to assault the fort here. Go let the army build back up. That isn't taking war score, but it is good enough. Okay, never mind. I have to abandon this game and try again later. Captured the one person that could help me. Oh boy. Can I get a holy order? No, no holy orders yet. I can't get a lifestyle pork, which I will be getting store leader. In this situation, I really do need it. And we'll just keep moving up. Someone's trying to murder my brother? Oh boy. Can't have that now, can we? Someone's also raiding me. Are you... Yeah. Wait, is that Denmark? No, it's Estonia. Oh, my brother had a kid. Margarita. No, you will have a proper Swedish name, Sophia. Welcome to the family, Sophia. I'm sorry, my. Vassal. Okay, my vassal. And we've... We've captured the sacred branch of Thor. Is the game trying to tell me something here? I mean, it's going to the th throne room, but is the, is, is the game trying to tell me something here? Activity joinable. Chieftain Bow's Grand Tournament? I can join this guy's tournament. To the worthless King Eric. I am organizing a grand tournament and now I'm going to try to pronounce that name. We will start with a wrestling, with a wrestling, a chance to show your skill to all I warrant. You join Chief Bowsall's tournament. I am not going to join. More spot. Despite successfully besieging the settlement of Kalmar, a Fortification protecting the swaths of Great Moor, 
High Chieftain Avatar has restrained his troops. The resulting looting has been isolated and sporadic. Though your vassal has been spared, the Estonian eye, your personal domains Hungary. Yeah, Kalmar, which is this area down here. Yeah, it's either... Pretty much this region right around here. That's Kalmar, and you would have the Kalmar Union, which is a joint union of Norway, Denmark, and Sweden, led by the Danish, to kind of be a uniting force in the Baltic. And of course, it goes poorly for everyone that's not Danish. I could sponsor something. You want to forge a goblet? I won't do that right now. I kind I kind of need the money. Let's see. More commander traits. More man at arms. Defending river crossing. Defending Antiga and defensive building. All right. Uh, would you be better? Possibly... Eric would be better, but he's currently not in the army. Let's see if I can't get just more troops, because I probably will need them. Alright. William won! He actually won! The reckless King William of England, his vassals, and his whole family has heeded the call of Albion and embraced English culture. He actually won! I'm surprised about that because so many times when I tried to play in 1066, he loses. The mad lad actually won, and why are you fighting the check? Oh, you're not fighting the check, you're fighting Prussia. Because of Denmark. Okay, then. Let's, let's get in this fight now. Stop raiding me! Oh, that's a lot of troops and you're raiding my capital, so I'm going to switch to myself here. That's a bad... Oh, boy. I will get you on the council. I lost one of my knights. I'll put you as a knight. Knight of the North Star. The accolade. Seek worthy successor. I'm not going to white peace. I, I refuse to white peace.
It's come to my attention that some local commoners are moving to Erdogan, the capital of my store, Count Tok. Locals newly settled or not praising me can surely do no harm to his perception of me. It's not worth it. And in fact, I'm going to put myself in a little bit of debt. Wants to take care of you, so I could get that raid loot, and then finish this war. That's the loot back. Still the best man, so just get up there and win me the day. Don't want to hold court. Storm my capital first and foremost. My daughter has given birth. No, my courtier is giving birth. I'm healed up. She's my sister-in-law, though, so I'm naturally letting you marry, and... Well, we'll get this guy. Oh, you just fell into a trap. You fell into a trap. Maybe I fell into a trap. No, maybe, possibly. Let's go. With 53 soldiers remaining, let's go. Strategical impasse. Oh, I know this event. Uh. Logo of my commanders can act as they see fit. So that way they both like me. But since that is war score, I didn't get Eric. Though. Will I imprison Eric? I want to see if I can get Eric imprisoned. Catharsism. Duke Richard Capua has announced to the world that he and his vessels have converted to Catharsism. I've become disillusioned with the teachings of the Catholic priests and nobles of Capua no longer consider the clergy to be righteous and true. As Cathars, they believe their new faith properly aligns with the will of God and they are distancing themselves from the further religious institutes. Meanwhile, if we look at Catharsism, Teachings that all matter was created by Satan and is therefore inherently tainted with sin. Cathars believe that the only way to achieve salvation is to reject the materialistic world and with it all worldly desires. I'm sorry, what? to my prison? No, but he's not doing well in health. Hmm. And he now has a son, Edmund Erickson. And as for this activities, Traditional school log weddings. 
Grand Weddings are 50% cheaper. Weddings gain plus 15 acceptance. Increased chance to generate a temporary strong hook on lieges who like you at Grand Weddings. Hmm. Right, I'm going to have to look at that. I'm tempted to get the Sea Wolves. Plus one powers enable speed prestige from fame and battles. Like Sea Wolves, when I'm playing any of the Northern Lords, it's just so good. And there's the Wanderlust. Which I do get sent to the Varangian Guard, which was still a thing in this time period. I could possibly go to Norse with this. So let, let's look. So convert to Norse. Or Asatru. To convert to it. There is a plus 500 penalty to going to an unreformed faith. And plus 50 from Philo Lord. Converting to unreformed. And another plus 200 for converting to a different family. But plus, but minus 90 because it is in the realm. There, yeah, I wonder what's strange gods where he wouldn't be able to help get. So, mmm. Sea wolves could definitely be good here. Although that looks interesting as well. I'm going to go with House of Warriors because I need the powers and my effectiveness. I might still end up picking Sea Wolves at some point. And who else is still part of my... There are two houses. Skoga, which has no living members. We have Industry and Loki's Charm. And Stenkill. So... Alrighty then. So with that, I'm going to call this video to a close. We are... We have somewhat of a plan to try and get this duchy in my hands. Just need to... Take a page out of an old playbook. And we... Are starting our dive into what this dlc has to offer but it is getting very late for me in terms of recording so i've been type 1 dragon you have all been awesome and as always stay safe out there hey dua